So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at working with Note Effects, more specifically the input mode that we use when working with Note Effects. What do I mean by this? Okay, I have an instance of the Acoustic Piano Ballad preset loaded in Presence XT. Just a nice sounding piano. And notice that this is all working with the effects that are built right into Presence XT. I really like using this. Most of the time I do use any piano. This ends up making its way to the final production that gets released. So it's a really decent sounding starting point to do some basic writing. Now, if we open up the inspector right over here and we would go to the note effects, let's go over here and let's add an instance of quarter. Now, the quarter is basically a note effect that allows you to play one note and you're triggering multiple chords. There are some presets that ship with Personas. There's different types that you have available. I have my own presets that I've created here, a folder of them. I'm just going to go to, let's go, what is this? A one, four, six, five. Okay, let's go to this one over here. And now basically, if I trigger one of these notes, you can see that it's playing more than one note. Okay, so these are kind of got like, like a nice jazzy feel. Now, what this does is that for somebody like me who maybe understands how to build chords and I could program it, but I actually want to play it, I have the ability to play it on a controller. So this is the Atom XT, or rather this is the Atom. So I can play that with whatever feel that I want. Now in its default state, if I was to record this exactly the way it pulls up by default, let's go ahead and do that. Now, first of all, I wanna make sure my layers are not on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and record this. I'm just gonna engage record. And actually, notice here, I've gone to seconds. I don't really care about a click in this case. So let's just record something. Press stop. If I take a look at this, this is all single notes because that is the default behavior. If I wanted to, have this actually rendered into what I was playing. I would have to right click, I would have to go to instrument parts and I would have to render instrument tracks. Now once I do this, then I would have my, my chords. But that could be a little bit messy, especially if you need to go back and forth. So let's take a look at another approach. If you hover your cursor to the left over here where it says input mode, if we toggle this, take a look at how we have this now orange, orangish yellow color on the input mode and it flipped from the default behavior, right? Click this. This basically means that we would now be recording through the quarter and any performances that we record will actually get rendered. So now if I do the same thing, we'll record enable. Now it's as if though I played it that way. Now, obviously this is still very static sounding. You can see here that we have a fixed velocity that everything is coming in at. Well, not necessarily a fixed velocity. If we sh or Alt or Option double click, there is velocity information, but notice that each one of these has the exact same velocity. So I would still probably want to randomize and do something to all of these notes over here in terms of the MIDI editing where I could do something. I could humanize, I could do something to it adjust the velocity range, adjust the start range, it's something like that. This would probably be too much, but if we played it now, this might sound more realistic. I would probably spend more time on this, but you get the, you get the idea. This is a great way that if you have the, a preset that you're working with, or if you actually input the chords into the quarter, you could then perform something by using one keyboard, and you don't even have to have a controller. You could use the basic QWERTY keyboard that ships with Persona Studio One. So you don't even need to have an external controller. So this is one area where it comes in handy, is with the quarter. Another area would be, let's say that you actually have some chords. I'm gonna right click and let's duplicate track complete, which is gonna create a whole new instance that will be a separate instance in terms of the instrument rack. If we were to open this up now, where are we over here? Uh, whoops, this one right here. You'll see that we have presence and presence too. So it's just created a whole new instance. If I wanted to have anything happening, but I wanted to have this on an arpeggiator, and in this case, we're gonna be doing this to an actual BPM. So in this case, I'll switch this back to beats. Then I would have the ability to take the quarter and then I could also stack the arpeggiator on top of that. And I could also do the same thing here. So now we have two different processes or two different processors 
that will be playing. And all, all I have to do is make sure this is record enabled. Now, the other thing that we can do, and this is not necessarily going to impart itself, but let's say I wanted to transpose. I could go like up one, or I could go up 12 if I wanted to, and I could be playing the same octave. I could also change my velocity. If I wanted everything to be super loud, then I can just tap this gently, or I could do the opposite over here. I could go to minus, not, not minus 127, but let's go to like something like this. Now, no matter how hard I play, you can barely hear it now, but you get the idea. So let's go to like 110 or something like that. And now let's lay something down. I'm gonna put the click on and take a look at this. So I've just used a bunch of different things here. I used the quarter, I flipped the input mode so that the chords are actually being rendered. Then I used the arpeggiator. I just chose a basic preset that was being used. Then I actually transposed it. Yeah, I, I, and the transposition that happens, this is something that is kind of like a filter that's applied, but notice that the actual transposition doesn't apply to the input. Like if I take a listen to these notes, if I set this back to zero, Take a listen to this. These notes didn't move over here. And if I went now up 12, and I could go 14, notice that nothing here is moving. If though I wanted to use this to say, okay, well, how does this sound if it's an octave higher and I like it? Then I could say to myself, okay, let's shift all and then shift up arrow. And then we have now actually rendered that change or we've actually made that change, but we additioned it first with the transport. And in this case, I have to zero this back out. So there's a lot of different ways. If you can't really perform or you don't have the ability to you know, switch chords fast and you want to, you hear certain things in your head, like you hear um, a certain chord progression and then you say to yourself, oh, I totally know what I hear in my head. I hear a synthesizer that is has a filter that is slowly opening up and it starts off really quiet and muffled and it slowly opens up and it gets more edge on it. And then I want to have an arpeggiator that's running really, really fast on that chord progression. You could actually perform that and tweak it on the way in, or you could perform the chords and then you could have had this set to the arpeggiator and then you could tweak it till you're happy and then you could have rendered it. So there's like so many different ways to work if you're not able to play things. Studio One gives you a lot of abilities to use some of the built-in tools to arrive at some results. Don't know if anybody's using note effects that way. Hopefully you are, and hopefully if you haven't thought about it or you didn't know about flipping the input mode, that this is something that maybe you can try on your next production. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.